Okay, it's the weekend, but I am up with the lark because I'm going to head off today into the forest on my own. The primary thing to do today is to test that Russian IRP P ration pack. We're going to spend a whole day out there and that's going to be my meals for the day. But I think while we're out in the forest, we might well find some other interesting things. So, let's head off. Okay, so off we go. I'm going to head away from the car park a little bit. You may notice there's some frost on my breath. And that's because we're near the end of October and today we've had the first frost of the autumn. And so I'm going to head off on the track a little bit and then we'll head off into the woods. Now, just to be realistic about this, of course, there is no, no really wild wilderness here in the south of England. So this is the next best thing for me, which is the new forest. Now, the new forest is quite populous and there are walking tracks everywhere. So it's, it's not like I'm going to go off and head off into the wilderness and get eaten by a bear. It's quite, not quite like that in the UK here. Anyway, let's get ourselves started and see where we get to. I haven't had breakfast yet and I'm a little bit cold. I'm slightly underdressed for this weather, but it's going to be a lovely day. So I didn't want to carry too much clothing. So I'll just get myself moving and that will keep me warm. As you can see, there's a frost on the grass. Quite a sudden and I guess quite severe one because it's been a very clear night beautiful blue sky and over there the sun is really only just coming up we can see the sun on the heathland over there Okay, I'm gonna put the camera off now because I'm gonna hike for a bit while we find a spot for breakfast. It is quite lovely watching the sun come up across the heather. Soon all that frost will be gone and I suspect it's gonna be quite a warm autumn day. Now you may at this point be wondering why I didn't bring my little dog Eva with me and well, there's one of the reasons right there. I'm going to be out here for the whole day and I think it would be cruel to keep her on the leash all day and if I let her off she'd just want to go and run with the tree head doggos so uh, I'm on my own today Okay, I think it's time for a bit of brekkie. So, let's see what we got in this ration pack. Okay, so I think breakfast is going to consist of a cup of tea with some creamer, a packet of these crackers, I think we use this chocolate and plum jam. Now this is the only piece of the kit that's not original. There was a chocolate and nut spread in here but the package was damaged. So I've had to replace it with this chocolate and plum jam which is a Polish product for no particular reason other than it's uh, just different from what I normally have. So, we use these are the only spoons we've got, they're a little bit kind of feeble. But I think we might have two packets of crackers. And of course we're going to have to, we're going to have to open up this Esbit stove and boil a cup of tea on that. Make sure I'm taking all my rubbish with me. So, this little stove. Oh, it looks like it is resealable, that's good. Because those tablets have got a bit of a stink to them. Okay, 
So we want the stove and one of the tablets. Seal those back up. Yep, that seals okay. Okay, now for this stove, well, it's, instructions are in Russian, so we've got to figure it out ourselves. So we are, I think, folding one set of these things down. Or up like that. I think that's it. And then we put the tablet in there and balance our cooking pot on the top there. I think that's how that works. We'll also need the windproof matches. Okay then, so, uh, I don't know if I'm going to have, there's apple jam there as well, I think I might save that for lunch, but I may open up this pate, this pork pate and have that on some of these crackers as well, to give me a good start to the day. So that's breakfast, let's get stuck into that. So I'll use this box as a bit of a windbreak. Let's get some water on the boil. Oh, those are not easy to get out. If you had cold fingers, you'd be having a bit of trouble here. Right, let's see if we can get that lit then. Okay, fuel tablet is lit. It's not... No, it's just gone out. Wow, that's not good. I could be eating cold food today then. Try another one. I've got one, two, three, four, five matches left. <laughs> we could be going hungry today. Well, at least we could be eating cold food today. Let's see. It's not especially windproof, that little stove. That's interesting. Wow. Not ideal. Well, it's just as well, isn't it? That as a backup, I bought my little folding gas stove. We'll go on there, that's good. Okay. Well, that's a bit of a letdown. That little folding stove is not much good. Well, that, my little gas stove is just fine. Keep that away from the handle. Okay, so let's get stuck into some of these crackers. little taste first. Mm. They're quite dry and hard. I guess that's what I should have expected. Let's try them with a little bit of this chocolate jam on them. Quite nice. Oh, yeah. So that's a Polish chocolate and plum jam. Not authentic for this ration pack, but I needed something to put in there.
Mm. Yep, pretty good. Let's open up this pate, see what that's like. So it's a smooth pork pate by the look of it. And yeah, so it's just a. I've had this sort of thing before actually. Sort of French style. Mm. Very mild flavoured. A bit of an unusual item for breakfast. I just broken the spoon. But quite tasty. Okay, so my water's come to the boil. Let's get that off the little stove. Thank goodness I remembered to bring this little stove because that little Esbit stove is not much cop. So, a cup of tea. So we've got a tea bag here. That into infuse for a bit. So I take all my rubbish home with me. I could bring a rubbish bag so I can make sure I take all my trash home. Okay, let's try a bit more of this pate. Now, these spoons are pretty feeble as well. These are just catering grade disposable cutlery and really not up to the not up to the job of really anything they've got to do here. Unusually mild flavoured pate this, it's actually hardly, it's not very distinctive flavours at all. I guess that's just the variety. Okay, tea is brewed. Now, I've only got one packet of powdered milk here and I don't want to use it all in my tea. So I'm going to find some way of closing that off or something. Because I want to save some of this for another cup of tea later in the day. So it's just going to be a case of fold it over like that and then wedge it in between two things. Cheers. Yeah, that's just nice English breakfast style tea. Obviously the powdered milk makes it taste a bit weird, but that's to be expected. Okay, well that's breakfast. I'm going to turn the camera off now, because I've got to film a whole day here. Right, well that was breakfast. Pate and crackers and a little bit of jam. Oh, just be, be quiet here because look at that. Look at that down there. It's 
So that was breakfast. Pate, crackers, jam and a cup of tea. That stove was a little bit of a disappointment. But anyway, I need to keep moving now because it's still quite chilly. It will warm up today. Let's move on. I think we'll try and find a few mushrooms and then we'll head towards lunch. So there's quite a lot of fungus about. I've seen lots and lots of small bacterias. And here's a big and really magnificent specimen of fly agaric, Amanita muscaria, nearly as big as a tea plate and perfectly intact and beautiful bright red. Now of course, as we looked at last week, what I do when I see these is look around the area because these are a reliable indicator that we may find seps somewhere close by. So I'll have a little scout around I think. Just want to stop and observe a couple of things. First thing is the deer are doing that rutting thing over there again. And the second thing is this incredible tree. This is an oak tree and it's grown a massive burr on it, or burl, depending on which side of the Atlantic you live on. And then the burr has rotted out and it's created this weird hollow structure. Quite bizarre. Never seen anything quite like that before. Isn't that strange? And so this burr would have been a structure that the tree created in response to some sort of damage, maybe insect damage or physical damage. And it's grown like a scab, but it's a huge one. And then it's rotted out from the inside and become hollow, like a little capsule with windows. How weird. Deer over there, fallow deer, looking at me, not really sure what to make of me. Just eyeing me up, figuring out whether I'm any kind of a threat. And what we've got over there is several stags competing for females and chasing each other around and locking antlers and making all kinds of posturing and noises to try to assert their dominance over the herd. Okay, the leaves and these on the ground tell me this is a chestnut tree above me. So I'm going to have a little scour around here and see if I can find any chestnuts. I've already found one. Well, it looks like, no, the squirrels have beaten me to it. 
and so I can't find, I've got one chestnut. So my basket currently contains one little amethyst deceiver, one tiny sap and a chestnut. We're not doing all that well so far today, but never mind. We're out in the woods, enjoying the open air, and I'm out here all day. No doubt I'll find something else. But we can see, look, this is a squirrel's dinner table right here. A squirrel, or maybe a jay, is carrying nuts here and opening them so that it's got a good view of the surroundings while it's eating. Quite clever, really. Okay, so we've got here our old friend trumpet chanterelles, or yellow legs. And there's a few of them around in various places. So I'm just going to pick a few of the larger ones of these for my basket. So I've got a couple already. So gradually we are acquiring a few extra edibles. That's good. Now I am seeing quite a lot of this today. This is a hedgehog fungus and it's been knocked upside down. In fact, it's been cut off and then discarded, I think. And I'm finding a lot of that in these woods, which tends to indicate to me that there have been gangs of people coming through here picking in huge bulk. Possibly not very experienced people, just picking whatever looks like something they can commercially use. I know that does happen. I'd say it's more of a social problem than an ecological one because picking mushrooms they will come back the only thing that overpicking is going to drive extinct is its own business but it's an antisocial thing to do to come and pick every single mushroom in the woods wantonly and leave nothing for nature and nothing for anybody else so there you go, rant over Lunch time. I've been walking quite a long way, so I'm feeling quite hungry now. And I've just found a huge fallen oak tree. That gives me something dryish to sit on. And I'm going to set up my stove in this little flat area here. And let's cook some lunch. Okay, so let's have a look at our menu choices for lunch. Obviously, it's going to include a packet of crackers. I think it's time I had that coffee. And then I've got tins of stuff. So I've got beef, I think that, I translated that earlier. I think that's beef with pearl barley. I've got beef stew. I think I might save that for tea time. And I've got beef with peas. So quite a lot of beef here. So I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have beef with peas, and I think this is beans with tomato sauce. Could have had that for breakfast, I suppose. Not to worry. So, I'm gonna have a cup of coffee. I'm gonna have sugar in it, because I think I need a bit of a pick-me-up. And afterwards, we might have some apple jam on, on a cracker or two. So, just close that all up again so I don't lose it. Right, I think we'll get a brew going first. Meanwhile, let's open up these tins of food. So I think this is beef with peas. Now, this is, I guess, an honorary episode of weird stuff in a can. So let's have a look and see what we got in here. Okay, yeah, it's like peas and carrots and beef. I'm waste any of that. Just get that out into the dish. It's quite fatty by the look of it. 
but I think I probably need that today. It's a cold day. So let's get that out into the dish. So it's like corned beef, I think, with quite a lot of peas. A bit of trouble getting things out of the tins, actually. The, there is a conspicuous lack of utensils. Now, I'm sure that the... Uh, I'm sure the Russian soldiers are probably a bit better prepared than me. But these little plastic spoons that come in the ration pack are pretty nearly useless. Now I am going to use my own stove to warm this up because that, uh, that little solid fuel stove was pretty near useless. I imagine if you had to rely on that you would be eating some of this cold. I think it all can be eaten cold but of course if you've been hiking out in the winter we're going to want something a bit warming. Okay, so let's have a look at these beans. I've got a feeling these are just baked beans in tomato sauce, but we'll see. Oh, that's useful. I'm going to have to improvise here. Luckily, that's coming off. Okay, not exactly what I expected. It's like yeah, it's like red beans in a, well, tomato sauce, but not not my usual baked beans, not quite what I was expecting. I'm going to mix that in and just eat this all together, I think. I can't be bothered to cook it all separately. So, that's my lunch. Quite a lot of veg in there. Two of my five a day, I would say. Right, the water is coming to the boil now. Okay, so cam I didn't have the camera running. So my water came to the boil. I've got my beans and peas on there. Just gonna give that a stir with a little stick just to get the, the heat all the way through it. And I've got my coffee here. So that's the instant coffee, and I've put one of the packets of sugar in there as well. Let's give that a stir with just the handle of that utensil. Okay. Right, my food is coming to the boil. Cans are going to go into the rubbish bag, I'm not leaving anything behind here. Now, I don't know if that looks appetising. It doesn't look entirely appetising to me, I've got to say, but I'm hungry, so I'm sure it's going to be fine. It seems to be nicely heated through now. Just going to give it one more minute. And we'll have that with one of these packets of crackers. I might even crumble them in there. Let's have a taste of this coffee. Very, very sweet. I don't normally have sugar in my coffee, but uh, yeah, that hit the spot. Okay, so lunch is served. Beef and peas with red beans. Let's turn the gas off. Let's try a little bit of that gravy just on a cracker. Mm. That's really tasty. Mm. Really, really beefy. The meat's quite fatty, but I suspect you probably need that if you're hiking with a heavy pack. Let's see if we can crush some of these crackers into there. Just turn them in and let them slide. 
soak a little bit and hopefully they will soften up a little bit. The crackers are just a tiny bit hard I would say but then they probably need to be because they've got to last a long time. Right I'm going to put the camera off now, actually let's just try a bit of this cracker now it's soaked for a second. That's right. Mm. It's really good and that's good to have nice warm food on what is still quite a cold day actually. Things are warming up out here but I did start the day quite cold and so it's good to have some nice nourishing warm food. Mm. Good stuff. Okay, so for dessert I'm going to have this apple jam. So I've got three crackers left. I guess I just tear off the top and squeeze it down. Tear off the corner. And squeeze it straight out the packet onto my crackers. So yeah, it's like an apple butter. Oh wow, that's really good. Mm, really, really tasty, fruity. perfect end to the meal. Just enough there for a generous portion on three crackers. Okay now that was quite a sticky meal, I've got quite a bit of grease from that uh, peas and beef on my hands and some sticky residue from the apple butter. So time for one of these wipes. I hope these are just hand wipes and not, not moist toilet paper but I don't know. Lemon scented, I think it's just a hand wipe. Mmm, lemon fresh. And I think before we set off, I'm just going to try this. I think this is a like a fruity sports drink. Just to give me some energy for the walking I've got ahead of me. So let's open that up. Yes, it's like a lemon powder in there. And I'll clean my cup out so I'll make that up with a bit of cold water. I wonder if that's actually meant to be consumed hot. It wasn't, it's not like a lemon tea, it's just a lemon sports drink. That's more or less dissolved. Very little taste actually. Not, not overly sweet. But presumably that's, that's replenishing some of my electrolytes. Although on a cold day like today, I'm not sweating an awful lot anyway, so I'm not losing a lot of salt. Yeah. That's quite refreshing. Not overly flavoured, and it didn't all dissolve properly. Yeah, that's alright. Right, onward.
Here's something worth stopping to have a look at. So this tree here I think is probably a hawthorn tree. It's already lost its leaves but it is being parasitized by mistletoe. So here we go, that's mistletoe growing in the wild. And that mistletoe well, it's hard to see where it joins the, joins the actual host plant, but it's a parasite, doesn't have any roots of its own. Actually has very little chlorophyll as well, so it's sucking up sugars and other nutrients from this hawthorn tree. And the berries of mistletoe are attractive to birds. Birds will try to eat them, but they're very sticky. And so the bird will go off and uh, eat the flesh of the mistletoe and the seed will stick to the bit bird's beak. So by that time the bird will have flown off to another tree somewhere and it will wipe its beak on a branch of the tree and a new mistletoe plant will grow into the bark of that tree. Mistletoe grows on a fairly wide range of deciduous trees, but mostly those in the rose family. So mostly things like hawthorn or, uh, or rowan, apple trees as well, very common on apple trees. There's something about being outdoors like this that makes the sky feel absolutely huge. We are standing under a massive, massive sky today. Now I've mentioned before, there's always an exception to the norm to be found when you're out walking. And here's one I've got here. These are blackberry plants and they're just about to flower. They're trying to flower now here in October. Now obviously they're not going to produce fruit but it's interesting, something has triggered these plants into flowering. Perhaps we had a little warm spell or something like that and these plants have decided it was the right time to flower. So, yeah, as I say, they're not going to produce fruit but there's a little bit of nectar there maybe for the bees. But it's all of these plants here actually, so it must be the little microclimate that we've got just here has just caused them to flower late in the season. Okay, now here's an edible wild mushroom that is in perfect prime, but I'm not going to pick it. This is Coprinus comatus, or the lawyer's wig, or shaggy ink cap. This is an edible fungus, very easily recognisable, it's very very tall, and they grow taller than this. But then, once they get a bit beyond this stage of maturity, they start to self-digest into like a black ink, which is why they're called ink caps. Now, I could pick this and eat it, but because I'm not going straight home, there's no point. This needs to be picked and eaten straight away. By the time I get this home, it would have already started to decompose, so there's just no point me picking this today. So, there it is. If I, if I, well, I've got cooking utensils, but I'm not planning to stop and cook right now so I'm just going to leave that where it is. Down here we've got what's definitely an amanita of some sort. I uh, will see if I can identify it and I'll put the species up on the screen but I've got a feeling this is either panther cap or blusher or something like that. But it's an amanita and I don't pick amanitas even if I am really really certain that I've identified an edible species. There's a tiny little one there, look, just coming out as well. But there we go, another species of Amanita. So that's quite closely related to the red fly agaric, and you can see the similarity. Obviously, it's got those scales on the cap. But anyway, we will be leaving that one where it is. Okay, dinner time. I am so ready for this. Been walking non stop all day. Let's see what we've got for dinner. We've got a beef stew, beef and barley. We've got a cup of tea and some sugar. Uh, there's a packet of salt there I haven't used. Some more sugar, a couple of crackers, and some of that chocolate jam. So let's get a brew going and then we'll cook dinner. Okay, so that's our water boiling for tea. I 
could actually do with a cup of coffee right now, but there was only one cup of coffee in the pack. Right, let's get the dinner ready. So again, this is kind of an honorary episode of Weird Stuff in a Can. We've got beef stew of some kind. I really don't know what to expect here. Let's open it up and see what we got. Oh, right, okay, so it looks like kind of, almost like luncheon meat. So that's interesting, because that said beef stew. But I think that is actually just a big chunk of meat. It is. Probably should have had that with the beef and peas. Never mind. I am going to heat it up. Anyway, because I'm hungry. Big chunks of fat in there, I don't care. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have the lot. Okay. So that's the beef stew. Well, it's not beef stew. It's just beef. Corned beef, I think. Kind of thing. So now... We've got what I believe is beef with pearl barley. Let's see if I've calculated this correctly. Yeah, that does look like pearl barley. Okay, so that'll be good. Together. Like a barley porridge. With little bits of beef in it. Well, quite a lot of beef in it because I've added it to tinned beef. Okay, so that's those two things. So that's what my dinner look, look, looks like before it's cooked. I'm going to add a bit of water into the dish just to stop it burning on the bottom. Right, just wait for that water to boil over there and then we'll put that on to cook. Okay, my cup of water's boiling. Let's just make sure that's not too hot to handle. It is. Okay. And then we're gonna put this beef and barley on there to cook. Now I'm gonna say at this point, that the idea of cooking this lot on that little solid fuel stove is a little bit ridiculous. I don't think this would have warmed up properly. I think you're meant to probably warm it in the cans, which is going to be even harder because you can't stir it, there's no space to stir it. So I reckon you'd probably have eaten half of this cold, maybe only warmed up the barley porridge. So what I'm actually going to do here I'm going to put a bit more water in there, make that into a more of a stew. And I'm going to smash up one packet of these crackers in the wrapper and crumble them in as well. And that might not look very pretty, but it does smell good. It smells very, very savoury. So I'm actually going to season it at this point. I've got some pepper in here somewhere. Yeah, got a nice little sachet of black pepper that's, that was in there. And we're going to have that on there as well. I'd like a bit of pepper. So let's get that stirred in. I'm not going to add salt because that meat did actually seem like it was quite salty. Make sure that's really piping hot all the way through because that barley will soften up a bit when it's heated otherwise it'll be kind of a bit, a bit gritty and a bit grainy I 
tea is brewing, but these tea bags are not especially strong. So I'm going to leave that in there a good while because I do like a, a little bit of flavour in my tea. Right, I reckon that's done. So I turn the gas off. And let's sit down and have a, have a taste. Okay, so beef with barley porridge and crackers mixed up in the middle as well. Let's have a taste of that. I said that needed a bit of salt, but I don't think it does. It's very savoury, very beefy, quite greasy actually. Mm. Yeah, the beef is like, um, it's not quite corned beef, it's uh, more like sort of brisket or something. Barley is a bit bland, but packed full of carbohydrates and energy. Yeah, I wish I'd kind of brought my little travelling spice kit to season this, but that would not be as authentic. But a little bit of chilli flakes or something like that. A bit more black pepper actually would have made that rather nicer. So if I'd been able to read the cans a bit better than I did, I think I probably would have had that barley together with the beef and peas, and then I would have had this potted beef with the red beans. But this is nice enough. Let's see how my cup of tea is doing. Yep. I think that's, that's actually, it just needs a, a bit longer to brew than I'm used to. So I will have a little bit more of that powdered milk in my tea. I don't know, it might not actually be milk, it might be non-dairy creamer. doesn't actually stir in all that well. It stays a bit lumpy. Yeah, and that's still rather a pale looking cup of tea. Never mind. Okay, so my last packet of crackers. Just gonna have these. Some of that chocolate and plum jam, which is not part of the original kit, as I mentioned before but I had to replace the chocolate spread that was in there. The crackers are really pretty solid actually. Not something you'd want to eat on their own. They work okay when they're crumbled into stew or soup like that, and allowed to soften a little bit, and they're all right when they're spread with something. But on their own, yeah, they're quite dry, kind of difficult to eat. So, let's have a look at what we've got left in here. That wasn't original, I just brought that with me in case I needed it. About half a packet of crackers I haven't eaten. About half of the powdered milk. Two packets of the sugar. And the salt. A couple of hand wipes. The fuel tablets which I didn't use because the stove was pretty useless. Although actually, to be fair, 
that little stove, it might be that I've set it up wrong or something like that. I didn't really know what I was doing, so it could be my fault that that didn't work. The water purifier tablets I didn't need to use because I brought my own water today. And the hand wipes, and that's it. So everything else I've actually used up today. And so overall opinion of that ration pack. Um, the food in it was really savoury and, and substantial. Significant beef theme in there, I guess. The beef and barley and the, and the beef stew was a bit greasy, I'd say, probably. But I think if you're burning off a lot of calories, I mean, I've burned a fair few today because I haven't, haven't stopped walking. But I don't suppose that's anything compared to army manoeuvres with a heavy pack or anything like that. The tea, I'm going to say the tea bag was just a little bit disappointing and weak, really. I like a stronger cup of tea than that. Yeah, that barely tastes like tea to me. So, overall impression of the IRPP ration pack. There's enough food in there to keep you going for a day, certainly. Um, it would have helped if I'd understood the labels a bit better. I think the tea bags are a bit uh, a bit feeble. I think they could, it could do with another sachet of coffee in there, um, and perhaps slightly better coffee. Um, other than that, it was quite interesting. The, the, the spoons, the plastic spoons are no good at all. I, I can only assume that the soldiers who are issued these rations are equipped with their own cutlery and, and utensils and so on because these things are pretty darn useless. I mean, just about okay for eating things that have been boiled down to a soup, but other than that, no good for stirring, no good for even getting the pate out of the, out of the can. So the plastic spoons are useless. Everything else was pretty much okay and pretty much as I expected, really. There was a good amount of food in there and I think there's enough there to keep you going for a full day's activity. So that's my kind of field test of the IRPP ration pack. I hope that's been interesting. Okay, so the light is starting to go now and it's time to head for home. So, hope you've enjoyed spending this day in the forest with me and reviewing our ration pack. Hope that's been interesting. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.